We have finally reached the final lecture of our Node.js for Beginner series. Before we move into the very last topics of uh, this course, I want to recap with you what we learned so far. So by looking at the server.js app, we can recall that we learned how, what Node.js is, first of all. We have learned how to create our very first application that was just listening to a port and waiting for a, a request. And then we realized that we wanted to do something more. We wanted to be able to serve static files from a specific folder. And in our case, we had the files inside the public folder, just one file actually, that is our traditional index.html. And the way we have been able to serve the public uh, folder was first of all by creating an Express app. And the Express, if you remember, is a web application framework that is very powerful. And we have, re we have required that as we have been installing it via npm, our node package manager. And after acquiring that, we assigned that to a specific constant named Express. Afterwards, we have created another constant called app and we invoked our constructor method, that's the way we can call it, that is named express as well, because of this variable name, sorry, constant name. And on line four, we have used the thing called the middleware in order to uh, intercept every request that comes in and solve our static files from the public folder. And the reason why we have this public string here is just because the folder name corresponds. After uh, our first introduction to middlewares, uh, we have realized that we wanted to do something more. We wanted to have a dynamic template in our application. And therefore, we have introduced a template engine named POG, that is the evolution from, of Jade. Thanks to this template system, we've been able to create a, a view for our app, and we call that index.pug. And this is very, a very simple view with an HTML head. And then we have these two instructions that if you remember are for parameters inside our template. And by that, I just mean that the title will be populated by a variable named title and the H1 will be populated by a variable named message. And we have done all of that inside a get request, which is the next thing we learn. And we've been able to create a get request using a URL that is partially static and partially parameterized. So in fact, in this case, the title can vary. We realize that because we see a column before it. And the way we parse params was by accessing a specific property inside our request object, and the property name is exactly params. And the params is an object on its own that contains all the params that we provide. And in our specific case, we were working with the title parameter. The very last thing we did was to use a method called render that does the rendering of our view and compiles it. And render takes two parameters. One is the name of the view, which is index, index.pog. And the other thing it takes in is an object with all the params that we want to populate. And that's how we've been able to create uh, our own dynamic template. So that's pretty much what we have learned so far. Now we want to be able to deal with post requests. So we're no longer going to send params in our URL parameters in the query string, but we want to actually uh, protect the data we send to the server and send it via a post request, right? So the way we're gonna do it is by accessing a, an object that is inside our request and that object is gonna be request.body. But before we have that object, we want to use another middleware that is called body parser. If we wouldn't use it, we wouldn't have that body object as we expect it in a JSON format, but we would have to uh, assemble chunks of data to actually gather whatever is uh, the data we're trying to access. I might actually show you something about it. So let's try to create a post and we do that by uh, uh, writing app.post and we're gonna call it new-user. And the new-user root is gonna actually take as usual our request and response. Then what we're gonna try to do is to log the request. And that's before installing the body parser. I just want to show you why we're gonna do that. So I think I've closed all the brackets, right? So I can now uh, send a post request to the server. 
To do so, I have already created a form uh, which has just a couple of fields. One is first name, and we named it, and one is last name, right? And then we have a submit button. The method is going to be post, and the form action is going to send data to slash new user that corresponds to what we have here in our server JS. So I'm now going to the shell, and let me just zoom it, and I'm going to start my server, right? And as you remember, we can just now go to localhost 3000 and we're gonna see our form. In here, I'm just for now entering random data and click on submit. And given that I'm logging on the console the, the request object, you're gonna see what happens. So you see that this object is really, really, really complex and it won't be that easy to find what the body of our request is. And to prove that, let me just change the log and try to log something by request.body. I'll restart the server and just that. I don't even need to refresh my browser. Well, now I do because I'm on a new root. And uh, let's try to send the data again. You see that is undefined, so we don't even have a body object right now that we can access. And in order to figure out what the data is, we're gonna have to parse this horrible object here and read the chunks, uh, and you can find more information about it on a very good article on nojs.org. I'll leave you the link that is called Anatomy of an HTTP Transaction that will illustrate how the HTTP transaction work in the Node.js uh, lifecycle, right? So what happens now is that we're gonna install the middleware that I was mentioning before. So let's terminate the server and type npm i, that stands for install, body-parser. And when installation completes, in the meantime, we can go back to our server and just type uh, app dot, you know that already, no? Use, because we are declaring a middleware, and the middleware name is gonna be body parser dot json. You might be wondering now why I'm writing body parser dot json when there's no body parser constant, and you might be right. So let's write the constant body parser equals to require, because we installed that via Node.js, body parser just as we did for express, right? So now this body parser constant contains a reference to our body parser node module. So body parser dot JSON lets us parse everything that is in the application slash JSON format. And in the same way, we want to also parse content that is URL encoded. Therefore, we're gonna write body parser dot URL encoded and URL encoding takes a, an object with a parameter named extended that we're going to initialize to true. The extended options allows uh, rich objects and arrays to be URL encoded. So we're going to use the query string library that uh, is quite useful for us. And after we have initialized those two middlewares, what happens is that we will now have the parsed request body inside our body object. So let's see what happens now if I reboot the server and check how the logs. Again, I'm gonna start my node server, and in the meantime, you can notice that we finished the installation of the node module. I'm going to go, let me check what I did there. App.user, oh, okay, there's a typo somewhere, and I think it's here. I don't know why it auto-completes to user. Not my intention, anyway. So, here we go, let's start the server again. Ignore this thing, and let's go on localhost 3000 once again. and let's type anything really. So submit. I'm gonna write an actual name and last name later. So as you can see now, request.body is no longer undefined, but we have a very nice JSON with two properties, one first name and one last name, and each property has a string value, which is exactly what we entered in our form. Great. We can continue now. The next thing I want to do, I can get rid of this log, is to actually define two variables, one being first name, I'm going to 
use lower camera craze and that's gonna be request.body sorry not bd body.forced name right and let me check my index html because the case must be identical so i'm gonna copy that and here we go and the second variable is gonna be last name that corresponds to request.body.last name right good I'm not gonna lock again the data. You saw that the data is already inside the body object, so we're happy like that. We want to create another pug view. And in this pug view, so inside the views folder, I'm going to add a new file. I'm gonna call it uh, confirm.pug. And I'm gonna just copy everything that was in my index.pug file into the new file. All right. So I want just to change, maybe let's remove the, the head here, or let's just put a title that is like uh, this, title user confirmation page. And in the body, we want to have two different params, one of being force name, and this is gonna be our first name, and last name, Bear with me on this one, it's gonna be the last name, all right? Similar to what we did in our index. So title and h1 were dynamic. In conform, first name and last name are gonna be dynamic. And as you might have guessed, they're gonna be exactly the, the values inside our first name and last name variable. So what do we have to do now to render, actually to compile this view with the data that comes from the form? We have to do the same identical thing that we did for our get request. So we're gonna write rest.render, open brackets, and the first parameter is the view name, remember? So it's gonna be conform. And the second parameter is the object that contains our params. So we're gonna write force name, colon, force name, but with camera case, lower camera case, and then we're gonna do a comma, and do last name, last name, all right? Nothing more than that. Let me check again, first name, first name, first name, last name, all right. So given that we are writing on the right side of our pug view, we're writing first name with lower camera case and the capital N, we have to do the same in our object, right? So remember this particular. I would recommend that you always use the lower camera case syntax actually. So let's save. I think this is correct. This should be fine. We have our form. We pretty much have everything we need. So let's give it a, a shot, yeah? So I'm gonna reboot my server. Remember to do that every time you add new routes, every time you change something. So let's clear that, node server. Back to our localhost on 3000 okay and now i'm gonna enter a real name alessandro and the last name is gonna be russo submit all right i can see my fourth name right but i can't see yet my last name so it means there's a typo somewhere in my code let's check that out so this is fourth name this is last name and on our server.js, we are declaring force name, that is request.body.force name, all lowercase, but here, you know, I put a capital N. And that's what you get when you don't, are co when you're not consistent with the namings, you know? So I'm gonna save it once again, and I promise this will be the last time, at least I hope so. I'm gonna reboot my server again, go to localhost 3000, type in my name again and submit and this time it worked out well i really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial series let us know in the comments if you would like to see more videos on node.js and subscribe to the channel to get updates on our new content